Today, we'll dive into the intricate process of diagnosing tachyarrhythmia from an ECG pattern, and we'll provide you with practical examples for better understanding. Welcome, everyone, to a comprehensive guide on diagnosing tachyarrhythmia from an ECG pattern. We'll walk you through each step in detail, offering practical examples to enhance your understanding. Tachyarrhythmias are abnormal heart rhythms characterized by a heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute in adults. They can originate in various parts of the heart, including the atria, ventricles, or conduction pathways. We'll take a closer look at all the tachyarrhythmias. So how many types of tachyarrhythmias do we encounter in clinical practice? If you know the answer, please comment below. And if you don't, don't worry. We will look into it some other time in some other video. But we will cover most common example in this video, so stay stuck to it. Now we have a step-by-step -step approach to diagnosing tachyarrhythmias on basis of ECG. Step 1. Analyze the heart rate. Tachyarrhythmias are characterized by a heart rate greater than 100 beats per minute. To calculate this, you can use the 10-second rule or the 300 rule. For instance, if you count 8 QRS complexes in a 10-second period, you would multiply 8 by 6 to determine a heart rate of 48 beats per minute, which is within the normal range. Step 2. Analyze the rhythm. Tachyarrhythmias often come with an abnormal rhythm. Check the RR interval in the ECG strip to determine if it's regular or irregular. Here's an example. In a regular rhythm, the RR intervals between QRS complexes are consistent, while in an irregular rhythm, the intervals vary. Step 3. Check the width of the QRS complex. Normally, it's 60 to 120 milliseconds, but in tachyrhythmias, it can be narrow or wide. For instance, a narrow QRS complex around 80 milliseconds suggests the electrical impulse is traveling through the normal pathway. In contrast, a wide QRS complex greater than 120 milliseconds indicates an abnormal pathway. Step 4. Check the morphology of P wave. Examine factors like the presence of P waves, their relationship with QRS complexes, and their shape. For example, if you observe P waves before each QRS complex and they have a uniform shape, it often indicates a normal rhythm. However, if P waves are absent before QRS complexes, it may suggest atrial fibrillation or an issue in the AV node. Step 5. Determine the PR interval and PR ratio. A normal PR interval is 120 to 200 milliseconds, and the ratio can reveal important information. Let's say you measure the PR interval and find it to be 260 milliseconds. This prolonged PR interval may indicate atrial tachycardia or atypical AV nodal reentry tachycardia. Step 6. Check if the onset of palpitations is gradual or abrupt. Gradual onset suggests sinus tachycardia. Abrupt onset suggests an arrhythmia. Imagine a patient describing a sudden and rapid onset of heart palpitations, which could indicate an arrhythmic condition requiring further evaluation. Now, let's discuss ectopic beats with examples. For supraventricular ectopic beats, or SVEBs, let's consider an ECG showing premature QRS complexes, often occurring in groups. This suggests atrial irritability and may signal a higher risk. For ventricular ectopic beats, Imagine an ECG displaying wide and bizarre QRS complexes following a normal beat. This could indicate the presence of ventricular ectopics. In conclusion, understanding these diagnostic steps and recognizing examples is vital in identifying and managing tachyarrhythmias. Don't forget to subscribe for more informative medical content. Thank you. See you in the next video. Until then, stay curious, stay healthy.